Hey everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world electronics. Well, I'm getting it put together. Been working out here all afternoon and something special today, something exciting. I've been working on the parts list for the Bedini motor that I promised all this time. Now that uh, I got my shop cleaned up somewhat, we are ready to move forward with a building a Bedini motor step by step on video and in the do-it-yourself world website. If you don't know the do-it-yourself world, check it out. The do it yourself world.com. Check out the articles. I'll have all the details of this on that site. So let me show you what I've got organized here for you. All the parts that you need to make your own Bedini motor. There's some variability and options, so I'll discuss each thing as we go. And uh, the original article from I think around 2010 that I wrote on how to build a Bedini motor and all the parts and how it works. There's a, I have a whole article on how the Bedini motor works. I'll put the link down below in the description in the comment. And hopefully I'll remember to put a clickable link up here. Anyway, go check that out and see how it works, the theory behind it, and I went in all detail back then in describing it. So let's uh, check this out. Okay guys, I took my time today and made you a very nice, pretty display with everything you need to make your own Bedini motor. Now, again, there's some flexibility on some parts, so I'll discuss that as we go. Here is the original Bedini motor circuit that I used many years ago. To build my Bedini motor and this is on the do-it-yourself world website on the uh, I'll also put it on the page I'm talking about but I'll refer you also to the original article I wrote long long ago but don't worry about this right now we'll go into details of all the parts and components and how things work later on but right now we're just going to get you ordering your parts so you can have them on hand for when we build the Bedini motor okay all right let's start here in the top left corner we need some connecting wire, hookup wire, uh, 12 gauge, 18 gauge, somewhere along that line, but definitely larger than 20 gauge wire. Uh, those of you that don't know, and we're talking American wire size, those of you who are not familiar with wire gauges, the larger number, the smaller the wire. The smaller the number, the thicker and larger the wire. I prefer 12 gauge, and uh, I'll have all the links where you can purchase this stuff for those of you who don't have it on the, uh, on the article page. This is for connecting and hooking up. I'll refer to my, uh, hold on a minute, let me turn around my old Bedini motor. Here we have uh, the connecting wire coming out of the circuit and going to the batteries to be, uh, there's the battery uh, powering device and there's the batteries to be charged and there's some connections in between. And these are the hookup wires you'll be needing. Okay, uh, John Bedini, the inventor, had suggested using Lincoln R60 welding rod, but it's, it's the easiest to work with, but I have gotten away all these years with bailing wire. So basic standard bailing wire. Now, you have a couple options with the bailing wire. Now this is to stuff the center of the core, and we'll get to that in a minute. You're going to cut this to lengths to fill the core of, the, of your coil. And the thing is though, you don't want the wires to conduct in between one another. You'll get what's called eddy currents, which are not good. We won't go into detail on what eddy currents are right now. Well, let's just say that you want non-conducting wire. So what you can do is lay your wire out, you cut into lengths and lay it out in the rain for a while to rust, which takes time, or do what I did and use some paint primer, lay them all out on a sheet of paper, paint them all, roll them over, paint them again, and stuff them in your core. Let me show you the uh, spool, if I can get a good view of my magnet spool, and uh, show you what we got going on here. And here is one of my old coils. Uh, on a more advanced machine that I built. You saw this if you had watched all my videos on my uh, channel here. You guys have seen this already. And there you can see I took standard plain old bailing wire and I stuffed it in as tight as I could. You actually have to hammer it in as tight as you can get. 
But what I did though is I first estimated how much I need. I basically put it in loose and then cut some extra links. And then uh, spray painted them with primer. Now you want them flush on the one end, the side that's going to face the magnets. And pretty much cut close on the back side. You don't want to hang out too far on there. Alright, so we'll get back to our parts list. Now you're going to want some alligator clips. Um, depending on what batteries you'll be using, you're going to want either the large ones to fit the car battery terminal post or deep cycle like your golf cart, or some little clip-ons for your little uh, alarm type batteries, the little 3, 4, 5, 7, and 12 amp hour alarm batteries. And I'll swing you back around and show you what I mean over here again. Now here's uh, standard alarm batteries, the smaller ones. And here's where you would use the smaller alligator clips for this type. Or I've got the big boys for connecting to large full-scale batteries like your golf cart batteries or your deep cycle battery. Okay, now we're getting into the exciting stuff, guys. The core of the Bedini motor. Okay. We've got two different sizes of wire here. We've got 23 gauge and 26 gauge and I got these on Amazon I'll have the links below so that you can uh, simply just click and purchase what you need okay so you need a spool of 23 gauge and a spool of 26 gauge wire about 100 to 150 feet for each coil so you're gonna need about a, let's say 150 feet of each okay and then might as well go right over to the spool which I used an empty spool from the same company. Now, there's a little bit of flexibility here on the wire spool, okay? But I'm gonna give you the specs that John Bedini put on his, uh, on his uh, circuit here, all right? Basically three inches diameter, all right? Three inches this way, and about three inches long, about like this, three inches this way, give or take, and about a three quarter inch center. A little bit plus or minus here and there on this. I think it's about 20% tolerance on the length and diameter and everything it is acceptable. All right, let's go look at my coil over here. Now here's a fat boy. I used a little bit thicker spool, as you can see, but about three inches in width. I had made this thicker because I used uh, multiple strands of wire, but that's more advanced build. But you can see the inner diameter is about the same as what I have on the table, and the width is about the same. And if you can't afford to buy a spool, you can make one. I used some junk plastic, some junk PVC pipe, and jammed that in through the middle, and hot glued the stuff together and made myself a wire spool back in the day. This Bedini motor was made out of all recycled materials through and through. Now, the electronics okay we need a little, little neon lamp and this is like your um, circuit breaker or like a fuse it isn't going to blow but it protects your circuits from being fried in case you accidentally disconnect your charging battery which believe it or not happens a lot so that that just basically um, blows off the radiant energy and protects your circuits you have a little lamp they call it a a grain of wheat lamp and I happen to have green the color does not matter these are just indicators for you to uh, show you what's going on in your circuit and I'll have the links here as well in the article we have a hundred ohm resistor and we have a 1000 ohm potentiometer which is a variable resistor you turn the dial those of you familiar with TVs the old-school TVs or your stereos you turn the dial and it makes a difference in your tuning or whatever and uh, your especially volume control that was used for back in the day these things are becoming obsolete now with digital age but anyway that's your uh, variable resistor you've got two diodes and what you have here is a 1N4001 don't worry about anything but just ordering the parts for now don't worry about what they are how they work and you have a 1N4007. And we, when we get to building the Bedini motor, I'll explain how to put these in correctly and properly. There's a, it's like a one-way valve, basically. 
It controls electricity and allows it to flow one way and not the other. Very simple device. Now we have what's called a transistor, which is a 2N3055. 2N3055. And you want the metal case. And I will put the link on here below as, as well. But this is your this is like a light switch. It has three legs on it. One is your, your switch on off, and the other one is your power in and the power out basically. So it's an electronic light switch in a way. And then you've got your magnets. Um, basic, simple, one inch by two inch by three eighths inch ceramic magnets. All right. And if you're milling a small wheel, which I'll show you beh uh, behind me in a minute, you want about eight magnets. If you're building a big bicycle wheel, you want to go with 16 magnets. So let me show you the two options over here. My good old Bedini motor has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight magnets on it. And this is just an old lawnmower wheel. Really, really old lawnmower wheel. And important about the wheel, we'll get to that in a minute, but you'll see how freely that spins. That's very important. Remember that, we'll get back to that. And if you use a bicycle wheel, you'll have, according to the spec, 16. Um, some people use 24, but uh, it's you can be a little flexible on that based on the size of the wheel. I've got a larger wheel here, but uh, stick with 8 or 16 for now, and you can always expand and play around and modify later. Now the wheel. This is a plain old bicycle wheel, all right? You want a non-magnetic wheel. Anything will do. It's really very flexible on the wheel. Um, you see I have a lawnmower wheel. I have a bicycle wheel. I used a roller skate wheel one time. But when you're getting really small, then it's getting harder to put the magnets on. So you want something that's big enough that you can mount your magnets on with ease. Um, John always recommended going with a standard bicycle wheel which you can find pretty much everywhere. You just want you want either aluminum or plastic. You just don't want the steel bicycle rims. And um, I've had this one kicking around for a lot of years. And I remember I paid a lot of money for that back in New York, back when I first moved to New York. So I've had this wheel a long time, and uh, I had used it at one point, cleaned it up. But again, it's very, very flexible on the wheel. The wheel is going to be like a flywheel effect, and we'll go back around to my old Benini motor over here. The wheel, if you give a little spin, should have very loose bearings. Now, if you use a lawnmower wheel, basically what I did back in the day is I sat down watching a movie and put a pencil in the middle. I put uh, duct tape on a pencil and held the pencil in my hand and spun the wheel and spun it and spun it and spun it and then I added some lube in the bearings and I would spun it and spun it and actually it took me days and nights and who knows I can't remember how long but until the bearings started to spin very freely that is a very important deal is that you have extremely loose free spinning bearings that's one of the most important things of all people who take a brand new wheel with tight bearings are never going to get this to work okay very super loose free spinning bearings. I can't stress that enough. That's one of the very important details of this circuit. Okay. Now, this does have some steel in the middle, so will your bicycle wheel? Don't stress about that. What is essential is the part that the magnets are attached to. There is rubber or non magnetically conducting. All right. I would advise going with something like this. You go out and find an old lawnmower wheel like this, or you go to your bicycle wheel. All right. And here I actually spent a fair amount of money back in New York back in the day for this plastic BMX bicycle wheel, and um, that is a really, really good way to go because you're absolutely non-conducting. There's nothing here going to conduct the magnetism. It's a very loose, free-spinning wheel, as you can see, and with a bicycle wheel, you have the option, let me go back over to the one on the table, 
of loosening up your bearings and actually taking them apart and what you want to do is you want to if you have a wheel that you can you take out your bearings you hit them with brake cleaner okay and now brake cleaner a lot of you know what it is some of you don't um, if I remember I'll try to put that on the link below as well you want to clean out these bearings till there's no grease left okay and then you want to put a super super light weight oil like machine oil in the bearings you don't want grease you want to clean all the grease out of the bearings and put a super super lightweight oil in the bearings uh, gun oil would work and later on when we start getting fi fancy and fine tuning there's some very very expensive super thin uh, lubricating oil that we can get into alright but for now um, I would advise everybody get a bicycle wheel also important if you use a used bicycle wheel not a big deal a lot of people can find an old junk bicycle wheel make sure it's straight when you rotate the wheel let me go back over here when you rotate the wheel you want to be sure that it doesn't wobble alright you want the wheel to be very straight and not have any bends in the rim if you have a bent up rim either take it to a bike shop and get it fixed or just get a new rim it's going to be a lot easier to start with a new wheel because the bends are going to mess you up in the long run when you're fine tuning your Bedini motor in the future. Now we have some odds and ends. Um, super glue and duct tape. I don't have super glue on hand, so forgive me for not having a little tube here. Let's just imagine it's right there. Super glue and duct tape. Um, some kind of a fiber reinforced tape. Okay. The idea, we'll show you again back to the wheel. The idea is actually I've used hot glue in this case all right depends on what you want I think I used super glue and hot glue and reinforcing fiber fiber reinforced tape the idea is these wheels are going to be spinning super fast and if a magnet flies off at high speed it's going to act like a projectile or like a bullet and could blast through your wall or a nearby person or animal that is not desirable and not at all fun. So you will want to secure your magnets with super glue and in my case hot glue if you want but definitely fiber reinforced tape. Um, John used a special packing tape. It's the clear packing tape with the fibers in it. Very very strong very good stuff. If you get the duct tape get better stuff because the cheap stuff rips. Um, this one has been around for many years and still holds together. Now you're going to get some little clapping once in a while as the super glue breaks loose and that's why the tape is there. Don't worry about that. The tape is definitely going to do its job for you in that case. Alright guys, well that concludes our shopping list for building a Bedini motor. I know a lot of you have waited long for this, to, this day to come. Well, here it is. Um, again, do check out the article. I'm going to have all the links and all everything sourced out there for you on that site. And there are some odds and ends and some tools as well that you will need, such as a uh, glue gun if you decide to use the hot glue, and a soldering iron, some solder. There's some basic things that you'll need: uh, wire cutters, crimp on or wire crimp, uh, crimping tools. I'll have all that on the article page as well so go ahead and make sure you do check that out and have everything on hand before you start this build uh, mosquitoes are moving in on me here so thank you guys for watching please subscribe if you haven't and follow along because we will start building a Bedini motor in the coming days here I'm going to give you a couple days to get your parts on hand and uh, then I'm going to start the video series start building this so uh, Please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button to get all of my uh, video updates. Every time I uplo upload a video, then you get a notification. Thank you guys. Talk to you later.